Hello, and welcome to the case chat session on January 7th, 2015. My name is Dean Rogers, and I'm the senior analyst for Case & Company. Now, as always, we all know that trading is risky and that what we're doing here is for educational purposes only. We're trying to show you some techniques that may help improve your decision-making process when you're trading. But in no way is this to be considered advice or any type of consulting. Today, we're going to go through some trade setups and targets for the E-mini S&P 500 and crude oil. I'd also like to take a moment to tell you all about a webinar hosted by Ninja Trader that our company's president, Miss Cynthia Case, and myself will be speaking at on Tuesday, January 13th at 4.15 p.m. Eastern. In this webinar, we're going to go through different techniques to show you how to maximize gains and to minimize your risk. Uh, as I always tell you guys, trading is more than just optimizing and finding entry and exit points. It's also about mitigating risk, managing risk, placing effective stops, managing position size, and so on. Those are really the keys to being a successful trader. And those are some of the techniques that we're going to teach in this webinar. You can get more information and you can register. There's even a short promo video, a three-minute promo video that you can watch at, at casestatware.com slash ninjatrader. Now, as a result, we're also going to be uh, changing the schedule for our weekly chat sessions for at least the next few weeks. We're going to go to a Wednesday-Friday rotation where on Wednesdays, uh, so January 14th and 21st, we will be holding the chat sessions at 4.40 p.m. Eastern. And then on Fridays, on the 16th and the 23rd, we'll be holding a chat session at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll start off by looking at the E-mini S&P 500 and the recent move up. We had the 1813 up to the 2079. We had that nice retracement down to 1968.25. Now that was a retracement that uh, we looked at. Um, it held right around the 38% retracement. Uh, you know, just below the 38% retracement of that move up from 1813 to 2079. So it was a nice corrective move. We saw the move up extend. 2086 was, or 2088 actually, uh, depending upon which week we look at, was one of our major targets. And so if you go back a few weeks and rewatch some of the videos that we did, uh, the video chats that we did, you look at that 2086, 28 area, 2088 area, and that was uh, the next target. Now, it was a fairly significant target, but it wasn't huge in the big picture. Uh, the market did stall there. The, the S&P did stall there, and we've seen it retrace so far over the last couple of days back down to this 1984-25 level as of yesterday at least. And if we look at that move down on a intraday case bar chart, so we're going to use a five-point case bar chart, if we look at that move down so far, it's been a fairly complex, potentially a five wave pattern down from 2088, one, two, three, four, five. And I can tell you before we look at the wave formations that this wave here, the first what wave one, meant it's larger than target at, at the end of wave three. However, the uh, wave five projects to something more like 1976, maybe even 1974. Now that may be close enough for a wave five and we could be getting a three wave formation. So in the bigger picture, we could have a potential, if this is going to continue to move down, a larger scale wave A or 1 that has a nested 5 wave pattern within it. It could also be a larger scale nested wave A where, where this move down would be wave A and then you'd have a B and then a C. The problem that I have with that count is that... Um, this correction up from 1984 is the largest correction so far. It's much bigger than the, the correction from 2009-50 to the 2023-50. So really, if we're looking at it, generally speaking, not always, but generally, your largest correction is going to make up your largest wave and, and your primary wave. So really, if anything, we're probably looking at this more than likely being a wave A, B, and then potentially it could extend down C, either that or this move down is over and it could start to come back up. I think a lot of that, although it really shouldn't, um, but a lot of that will probably depend on what happens with crude oil and whether or not it starts to recover and it is meeting some major targets. It's fallen below 40, uh, 40, our 4970 target. We talked about that for weeks and weeks and weeks. 
last, in fact, probably the last two months, I've been preaching 4970 every time I talk about uh, WTI. It's fallen below that now. It actually settled below that yesterday. But it is, at least as of this morning, was kind of on an upswing. Uh, nothing major yet, nothing to get too excited about. But if it does recover, we could see the E-mini probably go with it. Um, nonetheless, right now, as far as the E-mini is concerned, let's go ahead and bring up our wave formations and our targets. So what I'm really looking at right now is I'm looking for a move down. If it does continue to move down, this 1974 is just a very, very important number. And if it gets below that, we could see it start to connect down to some of these lower targets uh, like 1963, 1932, 1912, and so on. Now, the reason that the 1974 is so important is when we look at the, the waves down, for instance, here's that wave one, okay, that we were looking at of the potential five wave pattern, the 2088 down to the 2050. So that was our wave one, two, three, four, five. That wave one, its trend terminus is this 19, right around that 1974. But if we look at the entire move down or the, that, that other potential wave A, which was the 2088 down to the 2009. So the 2088 down to the 2009 that I said was probably a doubtful wave A, but potentially could be a larger scale wave A. The smaller than target for that wave is this 1974. And then if we look at the entire move down, the 2008 down to 1984 down to the 2018, 1953, 1954, I didn't color it because it's not confluent yet, but it may become more confluent as this move down extends. In fact, I might even be able to combine it with some of these targets here, make it more like a 1960, widen out my range maybe to seven points rather than five points, and look at that 1960 area instead as the major support that would be the XC projection for this wave, uh, the, the wave one, uh, this compound wave, it's the larger than. Uh, so, you know, you may have some confluence there right around 1959, 1960 with just a little bit of a wider range, maybe a six to seven point range rather than the five point range. Nonetheless, if it gets below this, we're probably at that point looking at a move down to this 1914 area. So there's that connection. If we move this to 1963, okay, we make this a seven point range. Right now, even at, at what it was, it, you know, it, or at the 1963, it has nine fines. If we move it to 1960, uh, we may be able to actually pick up some more fines. So I'm gonna color that and uh, look at how it connects. You know, now we have our 1953-70 in there colored. So it's a wider range, you know, we're using that seven point range. Um, in fact, really, we could probably even do something like this, 1958-70, and move that back down to like maybe a six point range and give ourselves a little bit of a tighter range, okay? So nonetheless, if it gets down below this 1958-70, Yes, we've got intermediate support here in 1932, but really the next big target is going to be this 1912. That's the area that I would think that this market's more than likely going to hold because when we start to look at the retracements, the most important retracements right now are the retracements up from the 1813 swing low. So the 1813 swing low was the last major swing low, and the 62% retracement of the move up from 1813 up to the recent 2088-75 swing high is. 19, right around that 1914 level. All right, now, all of that said, that's counting on, or that's, you know, indicating that this move down could continue. But something very, very important that we have to consider here is right now, what do we always talk about? A normal correction is usually a 38% retracement. 1813 up to 2088.75, the 38% retracement's 1984. Where did we stall yesterday? 1984.25. So there is a very, very good chance that um, this market or this correction could be complete and that we may get a significant move back to the upside. Now, what levels do we need to overcome on the upside? Well, first off, I'd really like to see the market overcome this 2023 swing high. So far, it's stalled at 2018. If we look at the move up from the 1984-25 and we look at those wave projections, the 1984 uh, 
well, I got a, I got a, it's 1984, 24, uh, 2010, 1992. Okay, so this would actually be 1984, 25. Right now, the equal to target was 2017, 80. So we met the equal to target, just overcame it, uh, but it's within our five point tolerance. So right now we have a corrective A, B, C. All right, so if this is our five wave pattern down, we've got an A, B, C correction up. Let's see what happens. If it takes out this 1992 this morning, it's going, or to, in the next couple of days, it's going back down. We're gonna see the extension to 1974. Then the 1974 connects to that 1958, which was our midpoint here, the 1958-70, and then from there down to the 1914. All right, so that's important. Right now we're kind of, this market's in a decision phase because We've met the 38% retracement of the move up from 1813 at 1984. We've met some support here at 1984. Uh, we have the five wave formation down. Uh, I know that Elliott wave theorists would tell us that the market trends in five waves and corrects in three, but upon my own observations and Case's own observations and study, studies, that's not always the case. Um, sometimes the market does correct in five and trend in three. So it just depends on interpretation. Nonetheless, right now the interpretation is more than likely that this is a five wave formation down where we have a larger scale what potential wave A, B, and then we could see a move down for C. Now, let's look at, aside from overcoming this 2023, if it overcomes 2023, the market's in pretty good shape. If it overcomes 2067, the move up is gonna continue. But in between there, there should be some clues and some levels that really tell us what the market needs to overcome to uh, re regain a bullish bias. Now this 2027 is gonna be important, not just because it's the intermediate target in the P1 projection for the move up from 1984-25, but when we look at the retracements of the move uh, down, or excuse me, the move up, uh, for the move down from 2088 to 1984. 2024, right around that 2024, is the 38% retracement. All right, so that 2024 is right there in line with that 2023.50. That's the 38% retracement. So a normal correction up of this move down would hold 2024. So far, that has been the case. So right now, my bias, at least short term, long term, my bias for the E mini is positive. Short term though, it's negative until at least 2024 overcome is overcome. Once it overcomes 2024, then I go back into kind of a neutral bias. And then this 2049 is gonna be the big key level, okay? 2049 is the 62% retracement of the move down from 2088.75 to 1984.25. It's also right before this 2067, which is a, the swing high of wave two. It's right around this 2055.75 um, or just below it you know, more in line with this 2048-25, which was, uh, you know, also kind of a sub wave of the whole move. So what we're looking at, we have a negative bias short run, just based upon the way that the wave formations are playing out. We have the five wave formation down, most likely a nested five wave for wave A, B. And then if we get a C, the first thing we're gonna look for is this 1992 to be taken out. If 1992 swing low is taken out, then we should see an extension down to at least the 1974. Then if that's taken out 1958, that's the big decision point because once you take out 1958, you're really looking at a move down probably towards this 1914 or 1912 area, all right? And that's gonna be the big key long-term decision point because if it gets below 1912, you're really starting to adopt a longer-term bearish outlook uh, for at least several weeks, if not potentially months. I really think that the 1912 will hold. At this point, given everything, it's gonna probably have a hard time getting below 1958.70 if it does move down. Also, because we met the 38% retracement at 1984 and we've got this correction up, yes, my hand is kind of being forced from the wave formations to be negative short term, but I'm cautious because this is, in the bigger picture, a correction. And my longer term bias is still positive. So, 
if I'm taking short trades from a trading standpoint now, if I'm taking short trades, I'm watching those on shorter bar lengths and intraday charts. I'm not looking to build some big short term or long term short position. I might just play this move down, but I'm going to watch it very, very closely, hold tighter stops, mitigate risk and make sure that I'm getting confirmation on longer bar lengths before I scale anything uh, on the chart. As far as the upside is concerned, we want to overcome 2024. That's right in line with this 2023. At that point, we move more back back towards a neutral bias. I'm going to probably start looking for longs. If I do take any trades at that point, I'm going to be very cautious, hold them on very short bar lengths uh, where I can have minimal amounts of risk. And then the key level is going to be 2049, which is close to this 2054, uh, right in line there. Once that level is overcome, then we could see a longer term move up to the next upper target of 2107, which is the most confluent wave projection right now. The 2107 connects to some of the longer term targets that we've been talking about, like 2150, 2177, uh, which is really important, and then the 2215. Okay, uh, and even this 2238, which in the big, big long term picture is going to be an important target as well. Okay, my biggest target longer term is right around that 2215 uh, because it's the larger than target for the first wave up from 665.75 that was made back in 2009. We've talked about that in detail in prior video sessions. All right, so that's our, our, our look on the E-mini S&P 500 right now. And a lot of that is gonna have to do with crude oil. Now you all know that we specialize in energy. I write a weekly forecast on natural gas and crude oil. If any of you are interested, feel free to uh, give me a call or shoot me an email and I can put you on trial. Uh, you can also fill out a trial request form on the caseco.com website for uh, our weekly energy uh, forecast. We do one on crude oil, Brent and, w and uh, one on natural gas. Now, as far as crude oil is concerned, we had a really interesting formation last week. We had this coil formation during holiday trading. We broke lower out of the coil, 49.80 was the target, right in line with our big 49.70 target that we had been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about crude oil right now because it is one of our premium products, um, but I do want to talk about it just from the standpoint of it is the hot topic of the day. Crude oil prices, gasoline prices are way down. Um, you know, everybody's talking more about, you know, how, how low is this market going to go? I still contend that uh, it's not so much how low the market goes, but how long it sustains these low prices. The lower it goes, the uh, more likely it is that it's going to be able to sustain some low prices, but also the lower it goes, this is like a rubber band, in my opinion, being stretched back. Histor history, you know, repeats itself. We see in this market, uh, in, in, in the, uh, if we look at the perpetual for crude oil, when you look at the big picture and you look at something like, okay, this is a monthly chart here, you can see these wide swings, you know, when we went from 49 to 147, that was under very different conditions, back down to, to, to 32, back up to 114, down to 75. But it's kind of like a rubber band being stretched back, and that's the way I feel about this market right now. Now, the, the fundamentals are different than when we ran up to 147 and came down to 32. But nonetheless, this market, in my opinion, has moved into ludicrous mode. And once it does recover, you can look right now, even a 38% retracement is, only, is right around $69. So, you know, you're talking almost $20 from where we are at the moment at $48.10, uh, $21 almost, to get up to this 38% retracement. And that's still a fairly small retracement in the bigger picture. So I do think that we could get a spike bottom rather than a consolidating market. I'm not necessarily looking for these prices to be long-term sustained. I'm, again, I'm not gonna be looking for 90 to $100 anytime soon, but I do think that we could get back into the 65 to $75 range uh, in short order. Uh, we could even see it move back up towards this 8335 which is going to be the 62% retracement over, you know, a six to six month to a one year period of time. Um, in the shorter run, though, we're still looking for a bottom and there's not a lot on this chart that's telling us a bottom is going to be made anytime soon. This is the February contract. And when we look at the candlesticks, yes, today we have, you know, this morning it was up, but it's back down. So far, it's forming a morning star. 
Um, you know, we need to watch the midpoint of yesterday. You can see how it held the midpoint of yesterday there. That's going to be important because uh, uh, when the market holds the midpoint, uh, you know, that's going to be a resistance level. So the midpoint of yesterday, I'm eyeballing it, but it's right around $49, $49.10. Our high today is $49.31. So we've hold, held that on closing basis so far. That's going to be resistance. Same thing with the open of yesterday, $50. All right. Right there with our 4970 number, big support. And even though we did blow through it, uh, you know, we had the 4968 swing low on Monday. And, uh, you know, now the market's, you know, got $50 as, as a key resistance level. Uh, if the market's able to overcome 50, you know, I, I was telling somebody yesterday, what I really want to see is I want to see this market sustain a close below 50 for at least a few days. And really, if it can close this week on Friday below $50, then we're probably looking at a move into the low mid to low 40s which were uh, you know for the most most part were you know low today is 4683 so we're already getting into the mid 40s now as of this weekend the report that we published um, on sunday we were actually looking at these are the targets that i i had published and uh you know 50 50 70 and 49.15 were big targets, but then we had the 47.20 and then 45.19. This 45.19 is huge. It's a major target. If we can take it out, then we're probably looking at 43 and really probably even a, a, at that point to move down into the low 40s. Uh, we could even move back towards that 32.40 bigger picture longer term. So, you know, I sound a little skeptical and that's because I am. You know, but again, this market's kind of in ludicrous mode right now. And even though there's no signs of a bottom being made, this is the type of market that I think will turn around. And when it decides it's going to go up, it's going to go up. Uh, and it's going to go up by a lot. But we'll see. You know, we'll see how it plays out. So look for this 4520. That's a huge, huge support number uh, as far as our target. As far as resistance is concerned, these numbers are changing every day. But right now, if we look at, like I said, uh, very immediate term, 49 and 50. So really, 50 is going to be the big key level. If we look at the midpoint of Monday, that's going to be right around 51 and a half. The open of Monday was 52.61. All of those are resistance. But if we look at the bigger picture, you know, weekly and really even more so the monthly chart, you know, the monthly chart, the midpoint of last month is $60. So we could get back up sit right around 60.10. We could get up to 60.10 and still, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Now, if we get up to 60.10, I think the move down is over. But I'm just saying, you know, that's a, a $12, $13 move right now. And in the big picture, it's not much. You know, it's still uh, not quite even like on the perpetual chart. You know, right around $59 right now is a 21% retracement. So we're going to probably see some pretty big moves to the upside once this market does decide that it's uh, done going down. And when we do see those moves, that most likely will mean that the S&P uh, will also be recovering at that point as well. So those two right now, I think, are tied together. And even though it doesn't necessarily always make sense, for the moment, there's some correlation. We'll see if it lasts. Uh, you know, I never buy too much into those, into those factors. Um, they, they come in and out of correlation from time to time. All right, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to call, email me anytime. Uh, I thank you for attending. Remember to sign up for the webinar that we're going to be holding next Tuesday, January 13th at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. You can register at www.casestatware.com slash ninjatrader. Thank you all for attending and have a good day.